First podcast? Yeah. Hi everybody, I am Kane at Jigsaw for you host. I am here with Nathaniel Wood, UFC professional MMA fighter and former K4 world champion. She is also Jigsaw for you's ambassador for mental health and is going to be joining us here at Jigsaw for you today for a conversation about mental health. Nathaniel, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me here. So, you are a successful USC fighter, a big and a big inspiration for a lot of young people. Did you have any mental health challenges when you were young? Now that I'm older, I realised that when I was younger I did, but at the time I didn't know. So I suffer with OCD and anxiety, but at the time I thought it's just a silly habit that kids have. You know, my mum and dad always thought I just had little habits, we called them, and I was just, I guess, a nervous kid. But now I kind of look back, I think, no, it's definitely OCD I was dealing with and anxiety, but obviously being a youngster, I didn't really understand that at the time. So, yeah, unfortunately, I guess I did grow up with it, um, but I didn't realise it at the time. How did you overcome them? So when I was younger, I guess I, I didn't overcome them. I just learned to live with it. That makes sense. Um, I've always had good parents, good family around me, which definitely I'd say helped um, because my kind of OCD habits, as you call them, you know, I always kind of had my mum reassuring me. So when I was younger, you know, I always had a fear of going to hell. So literally anything I do, I was like, I'm going to hell for this, I'm going to hell for this. You know, it'll be like something so silly. Like I played knock down ginger once, and put my mum thinking I'm going to go to hell. And, yeah. you know, my mum would kind of reassure me, no, don't be silly. You know, that's not kind of how it works. But, um, yeah, I guess I didn't know it was OCD at the time, but like now, you know, I realised it was something that I was definitely obsessing over. So yeah, unfortunately, I didn't really kind of know at the time that it was a mental health issue and there wasn't the kind of places there are today, like Jigsaw, I didn't have anything like that. But, you know, luckily I did have good family around me. When you were young, did any of your friends have mental health problems? Oh, when I'm young, I think a lot of them did, but just didn't say anything, you know? Um, I think, obviously, I'm almost 30 now, so back then, you know, mental health wasn't as big of a, a deal, if you like. Um, I'd definitely say my mates have mental issues, but, you know, what they have, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, no one ever told me anything in the same way that I never told any of my friends anything. You know, I was probably too embarrassed to. You know, if I ever said to them, oh, yeah, I have obsessions of going to hell, would I do something wrong, you know, I'm going to get in trouble for it. and. You know, you kind of just always act tough, I guess, when you're younger. But nowadays, you know, I think it's a lot more popular now, mental health, and people are talking about it. So, you know, I'd definitely say that's something um, to do is to talk about and speak about it. Are you better now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm a, well, so I still suffer with OCD, but my going to hell worries are all a bit, you know, in the past now. Um, but yeah, I have many OCDs, but I know how to deal with it. And obviously, where now I'm an adult, I know when I'm having OCD and OCD thoughts and anxiety, I know what I'm dealing with, so I know how to kind of deal with it. You have been professional since you were 16, which is a still a young person. An adult is 25 years and older. Have you had any mental health challenges as an adult? Yeah, same ones, OCD, anxiety. Um, I only started seeing a therapist about it about two years ago, because I was having a real bad time um, around May time, it was near my birthday, I was having a real down in the dumps day, and my dad said, you know, it's time to go and see a professional about it. It definitely helped, you know, it gave me a bit of understanding on what I'm kind of dealing with, um, and then I put on tablets as well to help it. So yeah, I'm still dealing with the same problems now. I think it's something that, you know, I'm not sure if you could ever get over OCD and anxiety. I have no idea if there's an actual cure for it, but, you know, I guess you learn to deal with it, and. You know, now my fiance, she understands it and the people I have around me know how to deal with it better than obviously when I was a youngster. How do you manage them? Me, I have loads of different ways of managing them. Um, you know, obviously I could be here all day if I talk about every single detail, but like, you know, from what I've dealt with the therapist, it's realising when you're having these obsessions and anxious thoughts as opposed to believing that they're real. Um, and for me personally, it's staying busy. You know, my worst times are always when I'm sitting in between training sessions at home, twiddling my thumbs and I'm overthinking, you know, because your your mind can be your worst enemy or it could be your best friend. And, 
if I'm occupied, keeping busy, doing things like I'm doing now, then yeah. it keeps me out of that kind of dark place, if you like. Um, so yeah, anyone that's dealing with similar things that I have, I would say keep occupied, keep busy uh, mentally, you know, not just physically. That's actually really good. What do you think causes mental health problems for young people in South West London? Mm, good question. I don't know. I start to think it's something, maybe it's in your genes and DNA, you know, like illnesses, I don't know. Because as I say now that I think back to when I was a kid, I can remember having an OCD thoughts, anxious thoughts at probably the age of five. So as far as I can remember, I think I've always had it. It's just not necessarily been as bad. So yeah, maybe it's something you're born with. Uh, you know, obviously I'm not a professional in, in this uh, section, but um, yeah, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. Hopefully they'll have uh, some medication that can just evaporate it soon and yeah. happy days. What advice do you have for young people who might be feeling like they need help with their mental health? Definitely talk to people. As I say, you know, I'm lucky, lucky enough to have family and good friends and people that I can talk to. Obviously, I know there's people out there that don't have some people to talk to. So if that's the case, see a therapist, you know, youngsters come to someone like Jigsaw, you know, where you can talk to someone. Because when you speak it, it kind of rationalizes everything, you know, and you have yeah. someone being able to tell you what you're thinking might not be exactly true or right you know and you get a better understanding of it and i think when you or if you write it down on paper you can see things better so like you know sometimes when i've had my worries if it was someone else telling me i'd be like what are you worried about you know you're being ridiculous but when you're in your own head it's uh, it's kind of like a mental prison sometimes so i would definitely say speak to someone or maybe write your thoughts out on paper and then look back at them and realize you know you're being ridiculous and if you're not being ridiculous and you have actually got a problem or something to worry about, then go and get someone for help. Because you know a lot of things in this life you can't deal with on your own. Yeah, good advice. Where did you get into MMA? So, originally I placed in Epsom with my dad, who's always trained in martial arts since I was born. Um, and I was always a fan of the UFC, and if I'm honest, I just didn't want to work for a living. You know, I didn't want to go in an office, I didn't want to be on a building site, which I was doing at the time after I left college. And I just said to my dad, I want to be an athlete. So, you know, I stepped in and uh, just started training with, as soon as the first day I started training, sorry, I, my intentions were to do this as a living. Obviously, I love the sport as well, because otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. Uh, so yeah, here we are now, I'm in the UFC, I'm, I'm making money from it, and this is my job. But you know, it doesn't feel like I've got a job, I, I get to play fight, as I say, uh, for, for my work. So, yeah, you know, that's how I got into it when I was 16, or maybe when I was 15, actually, and I'm almost 30 now, so it's gone quick, but I've been in here for about 15 years. Fair enough. Did you like to stand with your opponent or take them to the ground? I prefer to stand with my opponent because I know that's what the crowd want to see. Um, you know, I I love my grappling, I love doing jujitsu. Um, it's very fun, but I know to watch, people want to see knockouts, they want to see striking fights, and I like to put on a performance, you know, I like to think that when someone's left the arena, they're thinking about how good my fight was, not just, oh, that kid won his fight or whatnot, you know, I want them to go home and think, oh, who was that guy, and look up my previous fights because of how entertaining I was, and I believe that's through uh, striking. What is your favourite technique to use in a fight? My favourite technique is a good old leg kick. Um, I'm not the most flexible of people, so I'm, I struggle with head kicks, but I think where I used to play a lot of football, I've got a very good leg kick, and uh, there's no better feeling when you start to see your opponent limping. You know, you know you've know, you got the upper hand, and when, as soon as they start thinking about their leg, you know, that it's something game over, and you know you can catch them with different things, because it's like a human game of chess. So I definitely like a leg kick. It's kind of risk-free, you know, it doesn't take a lot to throw it, and. Um, does a lot of damage. Where do you train and who do you train with? At the moment, I train at GB Top Team, which is in Mitchum, with uh, Brad Pickett, who's a former UFC fighter. We've got a whole bunch of guys down there, around about 40 pros on the mats in the morning. So if there's anyone that's looking to, to start, I would definitely say to come down. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping that this is going to be my hub now for the, for the rest of my career. Fair enough.
What does it mean to you to be a fighter? For me, it means everything in the sense where, you know, it was mission accomplished because I didn't want to be on, the, in, on a building site, I didn't want to be in the offices, you know, this was my kind of goal from the start was just, can I do this for a living, which I'm doing now. Now, obviously, I want to win the, the UFC gold and be number one on, on the planet. Um, so, yeah, for me, it means everything. And I just like, I'd say I was happy being an athlete. You know, I'm, I'm a fighter in the sense where I'm a martial artist, but, you know, I was never growing up getting into fights. I've always been on the straight and narrow. So, um, you know, a lot of people think that MMA fighters are this kind of cage fighting, rough guys, you know, that's not me. So, yeah, I just like competing and uh, living the dream. If you could have one dream fight with anyone, who would it be and why? I'd say Conor McGregor, and purely because it's going to be the money fight. You know, you're going to walk away a millionaire if you fight him, so, yeah, that would be my pick. What do you want to be remembered for at the end of your career? I'd like to be remembered as an entertaining fighter, you know, someone that people looked forward to seeing, you know, because of how entertaining the fights are, not just because either A, he's a champion or he just keeps winning, you know, I want him to walk away and remember me as fighter of the night, you know, when there's 12 fights on the card, I want them to think what was the most entertaining one, and you know, I'd like to think they're going to picture me and me on that. That is the end of the conversation. Thank you for joining us today and working with Jeeves of You to help young people improve their mental health. You're very welcome, man. Thank you for having me. Good stuff. Gosh. That was 12 minutes. The natural man. <laughs> <laughs>